here we are. This life ain't for everybody. Brought to you by Jack Daniels. The king of the South, the king of the world, the iconic Jack Daniels. Enjoy it responsibly. Never allow underage drinking ever. Moderation. Jack Daniels is rad. They believe in our culture, our societies, our communities, our country. Lynchburg, Tennessee, sour mash, Tennessee whiskey. Jack and Coke's probably the most famous drink of all time. I think that's going to be my topic today. The most famous cocktails and drinks of all time. This series is called Breaking It Down, and I'm joined by my co-host. You know him from episodes of the Foul Life podcast, episodes of the Foul Life TV, episodes of Dead Dog Walking TV. His new podcast with Clinton Clay building is called Where the Pavement Ends. Jack Daniels presents This Life Ain't For Everybody podcast, Breaking It Down series with Chad Belding and Alex Crosby. This is the first of its kind, the first episode. Aldo, what's up? I started to salivate a little bit when you said we're going to talk about cocktails. (laughs) Do you salivate or Mm, shake? A little, well, (laughs) could be a little bit of each. Was it? Man, I was just thinking, (laughs) I had an unbelievable old fashioned at your bar. Was it two weeks ago with uh, some of that signature single barrel? And it was amazing. Bitters and everything? Every, you had everything. You What's did, in an old-fashioned? You, uh, bar, you bartend some, don't yeah, you? Yeah, a little bit. Um, the one I made here was uh, obviously the bourbon, whiskey, whatever you got. Uh, I put a little tiny splash of soda water, bitters. Uh, you're supposed to put a sugar cube in it or some sugar. I don't like the, but I don't do the sugar because uh, it's got a maraschino cherry and then either an orange or a uh, lemon uh, peel and the cherries are sweet as it is, you know, so I, I just don't put the sugar in, but it's supposed to have sugar in it too. So pretty, pretty simple, but they're delicious. Do you get mad? Cause this is, I'm, I like to have a cocktail. I like to have a, a cocktail with my friends, a cold beer around a campfire. You talk about an old fashioned at my bar. My, 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 my summertime bar is pretty legit, right? Oh yeah. But I don't get mad when I don't drink, but it does. Drinking is a social deal for me. Like I understand that there are potentials that come with it if you overdo it, right? There, it, It's happened. There's alcoholism and it's a serious, serious deal. But I, in favor of March Madness, you're going to just laugh at me when you hear this. I am going dry like Rogan does Sober October. I'm doing March Madness to where, like, I'm going to deal with the madness on my own. All this stress. Like, I like to, you know, unwind with a, a highball or a beer with my buddies at the bar, at a restaurant, at my at here, over a steak on the Traeger, some wild game, whatever it is. I'm 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 going to go 100%, no alcohol, very low starch and carbs. I know you're going to laugh me because you're playing with your beard and looking at my beard. (laughs) Guys with beards are not even supposed to talk like this, but I'm going dry for March and it's March 2nd. And I decided that the topic of our initial episode of breaking it down with Chad and Alex is going to be about cocktails. It's because you're wishing you had one. Typically, if you were going to cap this night off, it'd be with a beer or a cocktail or something like that. But I, I mean... Yes, you're right. There's there's problems that come if you overindulge in uh in anything. I, in any, in anything, absolutely. Uh that's what makes like in my opinion the March madnesses and the sober octobers and the dry Januarys and all that because I don't drink every day and you don't drink every day. You know what I mean? So you might go Monday through Friday without having any alcohol, but then Friday night, if we go have dinner or something like that, you're going to want to have a couple beers or a glass of wine or whatever it is. So it, I think it's even harder to, it's not harder to quit, but it, it, it seems pointless to me. You know what I mean? When yeah. You, I, I'm doing it more so for the vanity aspect of yeah, it. It's yeah. coming off of a long five month. I mean, we started duck hunting in September, October, November, December, January. Gen- September, October, November, December, January, February. We're coming off a full half a year of being on the road and 
hunting and eating and 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 partying or celebrating by no means is there is it because I feel I need to do it. I mean, I feel healthy as heck, but I vanity's starting to creep in. You know, on me. pool season's pool coming. Pool season's coming <laughs> up, and I want to, I want to, I want to dry out and just be a hundred percent like get the Rick Revilio in me, kind of like become one with my inner channel, Rick Revilio, right? Which people on this podcast, that's an inside joke, but he's very disciplined in his diet, his nutrition, his alcohol consumption, and. I, I love it. So I'm not doing it for any other reason except one, it's been two years since I've done this. I didn't do it last year during COVID at all um, because I always find an excuse. January, oh, it's duck season. I'm going to be at duck camp. February, Super Bowl Sunday. There's no way I'm not going right. to drink there. Then what happens in March? Spring training rolls around and I know I'm going to have at least four beers and they're the big per tall game. ones per <laughs> game. And now this year I'm like, you know what? I'm not even dealing with spring training What this about year. turkey hunting, dude? Well, I can do it because I don't, huh? I can go turkey hunting and my first turkey hunt is going to be the very end of March. So I'm going to try to parlay it into April Fool's Day, oh. you know, and just be like April Fool's, you can have a beer. No, you can't. No, but I am. Like I'm going on a Tennessee, Georgia run, Texas, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama run. In, in March? At the end of March, but I'll be driving for those days. I'm going to That's I'm going to turkey then. hunt towards the end and then take off and drive from California across the country. I got, I got to bring Axel back to Mossy Pond and then for training. And then I'm going to go do a charity event and then the Clay's going to be there in Nashville. And then I'm going to go to Lynchburg for meetings with Jack this Dennis. Is March? This is all in April. Oh, the, I was going to say, the, the charity no event, way. The charity event in Nashville <laughs> happens on Friday, April 2nd. I give you a 50-50 chance of making it through uh, St. Patrick's Day. When is St. Patrick's Day? March 17th. Oh, for sure. I'm not Irish. I'm Italian. We <laughs> yeah, don't blow people up You've been up cooped cars. up. You've been, uh, you know, it's green beers and there might be some bars open by then. I'm not going. 50-50. Maybe 75-30 I was at the Flowing in your tide today for I was at the Flowing Tide at 9 o'clock this morning for an American Almond Beef meeting. The bar looked unreal. I was like, Moss, Busy? this place looks amazing. No. No, it wasn't busy. It's just beautiful, like the bottles and. Oh yeah. I think I think spirits are awesome, don't you? I, bars in general, I, I, I think there's nothing better than a than a dim lit bar anywhere. You know what I mean? His new bar, uh, the parlor. Yes, the sunken bar, dude. It, it's just that's that's where you want to be, right? I mean, dull lights, tons of beers, tons of drinks. On a normal time, a lot of people hanging out in there. It's just fun. You can't help but to have a good time there. And I mean, I'm not saying just at his bar, but a bar in general. I love a, this bar. Uh, yeah, dude. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It, it It's the whole social aspect of it. You know, it, the alcohol definitely loosens you up and makes you have fun. But just being around people and partying and it's just fun. I don't know. I don't know any other way to say it than it's just fun. It's going to be a very difficult march for you. Uh, oh my gosh. It's like, and it's not that I, that I have, I, like I can go no problem and have one drink one day a week, sure. you know, just one day, just pick a day. But I, I enjoy it. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat it and try to say, as long as you're responsible and never allow the underage part of it. And I know that you have the stories of when you're in high school and you had a beer or you drink, you know, I remember my first beer, Russ and good talk dad and, and all the, all the quotes from movies you hear, but I think it's a huge responsibility and it can cause issues, but I don't make excuses about it. I enjoy it. Adulthood, going to that bar. There is something about the socialization, whether it's a bar or duck camp or a campfire out in the Elk Mountains. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if they'd be as fun. A bar, definitely, because that's what a bar is. But duck camp without a cold bush light or a cold bud light around a campfire just doesn't make sense to me. It's almost like a reward. You know, I was just looking at uh, Clint's son's elk picture that's up on the wall there. And, you know, you hunt all day long. The sun's going to go down, so you're not going to be hunting anymore. What do you do? You're going to sit around a campfire and drink two or three beers. It's almost like the it's the reward at the end of the day. You know, same with duck hunting. You know, you get up at oh dark 30 and you're out there all day long sometimes and then when it's over and it's dark you're not hunting anymore you're gonna drink a couple beers what else are you gonna do i guess you could cook and eat dinner. but when i'm cooking i like to have a right. glass of wine or a highball or a beer right it's not an excuse it's culture i think that if you look at the alcohol culture i think i was in costco the other day and because of covid 
and bars being shut down. Their alcohol section is literally three acres, it seemed like. Oh, my God. I just kept turning around, and it was like tequila, vodka, gin, They got bourbon, more wine than— And wine up the ass. An Italian restaurant in there now, dude. It's crazy. But they, they're 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 capitalizing on nobody going out, so everybody's drinking at home. That's the only that's the cons, that's the alcohol consumption in our. I mean, I know bars are okay open, but they're nowhere near where they were. No, have you seen that? There's a funny little joke that when we're all allowed to get back out to these bars, you know, we're going to be pissed because when you make a drink at home, you know, it's <laughs> two or three shots in yeah. there. You know, if you go to a bar, you're getting one shot. You know, everyone's going to be back to reality of not having the stiffest drink in the world. Yeah, they're going to be I, I, bitching at their bartenders like crazy. Exactly. Yeah, I definitely. Uh, the I mean, I don't. I don't drink a ton by myself. I know you don't either. You know, but I never do. Definitely, I never do. Really, I never do. But you know, like the 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 times where you get to be with your friends now, I think for me, you know, in this COVID world, I want to have a couple beers. You know what I mean? That's what because I'm not getting to do it very much anymore. So could you take a month off? If I said oh, yeah. right now, you need to go to April second. Oh, 100 percent with with St. Patty's Day. Yeah, I didn't drink. Uh, I haven't drank in March yet. So, I mean, I could easily I, you I want could, to do it with me. What was Sunday? Well, today's the second. It's Tuesday. Sunday. Yeah, so left. I have not drank in March yet. You didn't drink yesterday. Nope. So today's the second. You want to do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I th- that's what I mean, though. It's like it's harder for you, me. The, nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants me. to do it. I know. But it does. You do feel better. The last time I went to Mexico, I took 30 days off. Uh, oh, my gosh. There's 31 days in March. Yeah, you picked one of the long ones. <laughs> oh, you man, picked man. A spring training, turkey hunting, uh, St. Patrick's Day. It is funny, though. You could literally think of a reason why you can't quit drinking for every month, right? You're obviously not going to do November or December because right, of the holidays. Let's do it. Let's do All right, it. so January, obviously, New Year's Eve, you're smoked right off the bat. Smoked right off the bat and hunting season for us February, personally. I mean, if you're with a significant other, you got Valentine's Day where you're going to drink wine or whatever. You also have the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. There, March, there. St. Patty's Day. April. April March I, Madness, too, at a bar watching – Georgetown play Kentucky if you're into college basketball. What's April got? April's Fools. Um, <coughs> Easter. Ooh, Easter Sunday is – you got to have wine. Bloody Mary, you got to have wine. Mary. You got that ham, you got to have wine. So there's your excuse for April, yep. May. May is f- spring, dude. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Cinco de Mayo, boom. Cinco, Cinco de, de Mayo. Mayo. Tacos and tequila. Corona. Yep. Dos Equis Verde, a margarita. Margarita, yeah. I don't like tequila. I'm not a tequila shooter. Either. I honestly had one. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. I had to take a shot of tequila. I don't know why, and it it, it did not suit me well. Clay loves that stuff, but I don't know why man. though, right? So uh, June, I mean summertime. Do you really need an excuse anytime in June? But uh, pools, pools, beaches, July, baseball, baseball, baseball season. July, you got my birthday. Fourth of July. Fourth of July. <laughs> America's birthday, America's Alex. birthday, right? Yeah, I'll share it. Uh, what do you got in August? Mm, August, August is obviously still summertime. You got Burning Man, right? Yeah, but you also, there's going to be a UFC fight. Then you have hunting season starting. Right. So there, that will there it's over. That will literally take over your excuse list for the rest. But you let's say hunting season doesn't count. Then you have September. Memorial Day, right? That's September. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always on a Monday in September. And uh, then you have October, Halloween, Halloween, November, Thanksgiving. December, Christmas. Every day in December is a celebration. Yeah. Literally the Christmas. I, I always tell her I get a, an ulcer in January because there's so many Christmas parties, so many dinners. You know, people just want to get together and hang out. We, we did it limited this last December, but still probably drank more than we should have in December. Um, yeah, it's just, it's tough, man. And it's not a, it's not an alcoholism thing. It's not that you're craving, at least in my opinion, and I know you're going to share the same, you're not craving alcohol, but it's, it's what you do when you get together with people and you hang out and you, you know, you grab a cold beer, you grab a glass of wine, you make yourself a cocktail. That's kind of what you do when you socialize. And, you know, there's going to be some people out there that completely disagree and think that you should be able to congregate with your friends and not have a cocktail. Don't listen to those people. Listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> and when you start talking about spirits, the wine, the beer, the liquor, do you have a favorites list? 
I do for sure. Uh, Bud Light is my uh, choice of beer. I've, I've really been hung on the old fashions. You know, if I if I go out and, and it's cocktail time or something like that, you know, definitely old fashioned. But I like, uh, you know, Jack and Coke, Jack and Seven. Jack and Coke. Uh, always, you know, Jack and Coke. So I even like, uh, what's your little mixture? Jack water with a splash of something. That That's a good drink, too. My uh, new one has been Jack with club soda with a tiny drip of maraschino cherry juice. Or, and then um, maybe a little orange peel in it, but it's kind of just a. Like an old fashioned. But. Yeah, but I took it. It's it just, you get the real good flavor of the whiskey with a tiny bit of sweetness in it. You can add a little bit of bitters if you want, but it's pretty much an old fashioned just with club soda. Yeah. But you don't, the sugar, see, I don't, that's part of the reason I don't put the sugar in it too, is I like the taste of whiskey, you know. So and, do I. So I don't want to lose, you know, I think the sugar sweetens it up too much. Um and then, yeah, te- I don't love tequila. Uh, what's your uh, pool side? I-, I mean, I could drink 10 Bud Lights sitting around the pool, but. Seltzers or regular real beers? Are you a seltzer I could do guy? Either. Yeah, yeah, I could do either, yeah. Well, uh, do you have a favorite seltzer? I think the Black Cherry is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, but what brand? Bud Light for but, sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They're so good. They are. They're 8% too. I know. I had one the other night I didn't like, though. It was the, the new... Not Bud Light Select, but Bud Light the, the, the Platinum. They got Bud Light Platinum Seltzers now, and they yeah. got this one called Orange Blood Orange, and I did not like it at all. See, and I don't care for the uh, is it the mango everybody likes, and I don't like it. But I don't. I don't really like, like the mangoes. lime. I'm not I don't, a lime guy. The limes, yeah, I don't like the limes either. Really. What is the most popular bar ordered drink of all time besides beer? You can't say beer because. I'm sure beer outsells everything. Like cocktail time. wise? Yeah. A lot, Jack of, Mar- and Coke a lot of martini. Uh, I mean, if you go like your regular bar, not a, like a restaurant bar type thing, got to be Jack and Coke or. So Jack. I asked this question, and you know what I was told is the number one drink at, to order? What? A margarita. I said, there's no way. There is no freaking way. And they told me that it's a margarita, hands down. Really? Yeah, people that are in the business. So at least at the restaurant that I work at, that's not the case. I mean, but I wonder if they're getting their statistics based on Mexican restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Like if you've got a if you've got a higher concentration of Mexican restaurants, you know, obviously I order a margarita if I go to a Mexican restaurant. But if I go to, you know, the flowing tide, I would never order a margarita. Well, now this one that I just pulled up, 21 classic drinks in order at a bar. So these are the 21 most famous drinks ordered at a bar. Number one is Old Fashioned. Yeah. Number two is Margarita. Hmm. I would never guess it was in the top five. I wouldn't. At a regular bar, like when I'm at a Mexican restaurant, yes, of course, a pitcher of margaritas or a top shelf margarita, salt on the rim, shaken or, you know, over ice, not blended. These... I, don't, I just don't see a lot of, I guess, women. I don't know. what. It, I, I mean, I know that Cosmopolitan's they, three. That I would see like a Cosmo, a Martini. Where's Martini land on that list? Have you ever heard of a Negroni? Isn't a Cosmopolitan a Martini? Kind of. Moscow Mule is five. They got real popular martini a couple years six. ago. Yeah. Moscow Mules, I cannot. They're too sweet for me. I don't, I don't care for me. My either. brothers love them. I know. Clint loves them. Mojito. That's a sweet drink that I could dig, especially summertime at a spring a training bar. Yeah. Down in Phoenix at the right. But again, a Mexican restaurant, right? Or if it's like really hot and you want something refreshing, but you're not going to drink five of those. No. You know what I mean? I, and I don't think you, you're not going to drink five margaritas either. I have one one margarita, you know, at a, at a dinner and that, that's good enough for me. I'm going to a beer after that. That's how I am with Bloody Marys. Same I always, here. I always tell myself, oh, yeah, Sunday, we're going to rip them. I'm like, I'm done. You have I'm one? Over. I'm one. If one. And I usually if pour I even a beer into the other half of it. Yeah, and drink beer it. into the other half. Well, really good Bloody Mary. You know, I could I can finish and do all that. But, yeah, I'm the same way. I'm not a huge Bloody Mary fan. I always talk a good game. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want the bacon. I want the olives. I want the right. celery stick. I want all of it in there. And then I get it, and I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Um, they, it, a lot of times they're too thick. Do you know? Like bullies. You How big they are? They're big and they're thick. Yeah. Uh, Tomato bu- soup. Bucket of blood, if you ever make it up to Virginia City. They've got one of the best 
I think. It's kind of like a steak in a glass. Maybe talking about this isn't the greatest thing for you to do in this uh, March Madness challenge you're doing with yourself. Why? Did you hear my ice right there? Yeah, just, I heard your I'm ice I'm drinking rattle. a Coke Zero. Oh, okay. I'm telling you, it's it's. I'm disciplined enough to do it, how but much I don't you, enjoy it. How much are you going to work out during this? Crazy amount. Are you? Crazy amount. You want to get shredded up? This morning I did before my AAB meeting. I have a big workout tomorrow at 1030. With Les? With Pandola. Oh. You know who's who rips me in – in into shape is freaking Matt's wife. She oh, really? is a freaking killer, dude. Yeah, she doesn't let you rest. You know how Matt is. Matt will stop for freaking an hour and a half to talk to you about something, right? <laughs> but <laughs> he'll do one exercise. I hope he doesn't hear that because then he's going to prove a point on my next workout. That dude's jawline oh, yeah. is going to be hard. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. But Aaron, and they, that's the thing is that to look like that couple looks, you can't drink a lot. No, you just can't. I don't think I don't know. Like, have you ever watched Shameless? No, but I hear it's good. But you've never watched one episode? Uh-uh. Oh, then it's not even worth talking about. But Frank Gallagher, the dad, is kind of shredded in this. He actually gets shredded. I'm like, alcoholics don't look like that. And he plays an alcoholic drug addict. No. And then yeah, he, by the end, he just looks real sick and you know skinny. But at one point, he's got abs and he's kind of you get his shoulders are all defined and stuff. But I don't think alcohol alcohol has got to be. I've, I've never done any drugs. I've never taken a drag off a cigarette. I've never smoked a cigar. I've never smoked a clove. They used to call them cloves. Yeah. What is a clove? <laughs> it's like a cigarette, but I think it's made out of cloves. I, th- is there nicotine in it? Oh, I'm sure. They used to say that they burned holes in your lungs. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't that what the, the new, uh, epi, uh, not epipins, but... <laughs> <laughs> what do you, <laughs> would you eat a peanut? <laughs> yeah, that's what I use for my allergies. But what is it called? Uh, 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 Token? Uh, uh, no, that's uh, marijuana. Ju- uh, jewels. What are they? E-cigarettes. Those. Oh, what crystal- is it called when you do it? vaping? Vaping. Yes. Yeah. So I've never Those done crystallize that. your lungs. I've never done that. I've never shot heroin. I, I always said if I was going to write a good rock and roll song, I'd probably want to do that first. But any of the drugs, there's I've never touched them. So I don't know if. Alcohol is, I don't know how those would affect your body. I know that overindulging in any of that's not good, right. even though marijuana is legal in a lot of places now. But I think alcohol has got to be up there with the worst thing you could put in your body. Oh, yeah. Besides the fact that it gives you courage to talk to people, the truth comes out. I mean, there's a lot of good things about being buzzed, I think, and, have, and being around your friends and socializing responsibly. But it's got to be the worst thing in the world that will impair your driving, impair your senses, impair your judgment, impair your focus. It will slow down your metabolism. It depresses your system. It's a, yeah. it's a depressant. It all turns to sugar when it's done with yeah. you. It turns but into carbs. You know what the main, I think. They call it a beer belly for a reason, right? Right. But it's also partially like. You're hitting Jack in the Box at 2.30 in the morning for four tacos after you drank all night <laughs> for long. For my ass. You would never do that on a normal day. You know what I mean? No, and, never. And same with, even if you're at a backyard barbecue, right? You, you'll you'll notice it. You know, the food will be served. Everybody eats a little bit. You're full, right? You've eaten your dinner. As you keep on drinking, everyone just starts grazing on whatever's left out there. You, you can eat a whole bag of Doritos. Same with, I think, when you smoke weed. Not... Not I think. I know. I have done those things. You can eat a whole bag of Doritos that you normally never would Chips do. Chips Ahoy's are yeah. in every cabinet. Cookies, everything. You you go, you're in a, you're, what do they call it? Your inhibitions are uh, to the wind. Is so it a say. lazy man's drug, marijuana? Don't you just sit on a couch and watch old reruns of Sopranos or something I'll, and eat Chips Ahoy? I've probably done it. Or they times. say there's they say there's different strains. Is there a strain that gets you jacked up? I, they say that I've yet to find it. When I when I've ever done it, it, it puts me right to sleep. Yes, it I like it. To me, I don't know how you could be productive and do it, but you could meet a million people that do. I mean, you go to the the facilities that sell it here and grow it here in Nevada. They're working. You know, there's places seven days a week. There's places here growing it with you know people are out there doing all the work of growing a crop. But they're, I imagine, stoned all the time. I mean, You're talking about are. these places that are selling marijuana legally. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the funniest thing I've seen during COVID was the drug deals of of our America today as we know it. COVID America drug deals were absolutely worth watching because back in the day, a car would pull into a parking lot at night, roll down its window, a dude would run up, take the money, put a little bag of whatever in there, <laughs> windows up, and they roll. 
Nobody was allowed to walk into these bra what are they not a brothel? But <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? A uh, dispensary. They ne- nobody could go into them. There was it was car delivery. So now the marijuana guy, the salesman, has his iPad, but he's got a mask on. The window comes down. The marijuana goes into the window. The money comes out or the credit card slid into this iPad freaking credit card scan reader. It's like 20. It was a drug deal yeah. right in the parking lot during a Sunday when people are going f- from church. There's drug deals going on in yep. American parking lots with masks on. The funniest what thing. Is, what is the what is what is the freaking how funny is that? They're though? delivering it now. Right. So uh, my uh, a guy I know he he has it delivered to his house, right? And they give you like a, a delivery window, like the cable man, right? They'll be there between 10 and 12. And I was out with him. We were doing something and uh, he goes, oh, I forgot that, you know, the the weed place is supposed to deliver my weed right now. And I forgot the guy's five minutes away. Is it like Uber Eats? Kind of. And I was like, dude, tell him to leave it in the mailbox. He goes, no, you have to give him cash. I'm like, dude, doing a drug only deal. Business. It's a drug deal. Doing a drug deal. Yeah, like, like it's cash only business most of the time, I think. I, th- I don't know, man. I've never been to a dispensary, but I have heard that they have absolutely every type of marijuana that you could possibly. Oh, it's insane. The edibles, the cookies, the they, sushi They make roll. it in a soda now. Uh, it looks like a can of soda, but it's got... X is it really of, that cool? Is it really that good to be high? It, it like I said, dude. The, the the times that I've ever done it puts me. It makes me fall asleep. So, and and everybody I've ever said that to. So, oh, you don't. You're not doing the right one. Which there is two different kinds, and they do hybrids and stuff like that. I figure I, I've done it enough that I've done them all. You know, and none of it all just does the same thing to me. It's not like a. Obviously, when you overindulge in alcohol, you go into the blackout mode and you know, eventually you'll pass out. Right. But for a long time, you're, you're on top of your game, right? Like you said, you got the courage to talk to anyone you want to, you're dancing, you're doing all that stuff. I never get that feeling. I've never gotten that feeling from marijuana. It's never happened. I've never felt like bulletproof, 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Isn't that what Travis Travis Tritt said? Yeah. I've never got (laughs) that Who has a new album coming out soon? Does he really? Yeah. Adam Hood, Channing Wilson, and Brent Cobb wrote like four songs on it. Really? That'd be good. Back to the bar. Back to beer. Oh, one sorry. sidebar. Maybe when they open up a marijuana bar, we'll get to see if it's even true. Because if it only makes you fall asleep and weird, someday there's going to be a marijuana bar, right? Really? That would, all those different smells, would that be okay? Because you, I imagine they'll have like a huge ventilation system, but that's what they're talking about. We'll call well, it Amsterdam the, and stuff has them. You call know, it you, the skunk. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine what it, yeah, all your clothes would smell like? Oh, I'm out. I don't, I'm not saying I don't like the smell of it. I don't, don't, it doesn't bother me. I've just never done it. But back to the bar, beer. Bud Light's the best. It's the king, right? It's the king. Why do, I do like a red and white. I like Budweiser. I like Budweiser too once in a while. Uh, I don't, man, I don't know. Bud Bud Light, to me, is, it's hard to beat. I don't know. But why do people say it sucks? I mean, I'm not a Coors Light fan at all. They just don't taste right to me, no matter where I'm at. You, could, I could be fishing, fly fishing in a float tube, and somebody could pull up beside me carrying a, bu- a Coors Light and give it to me. I'd be like, no, I'm good. I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll just go dehydrated. I'll go thirsty for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I I'm just not it. a big fan. But Bud Light, it just suffices. And then, but then you got the the snobs that it's got to be a, it's got to be a craft. Oh, yeah. Sam Adams, like I taste Sam Adams, it's just too much. And then IPAs, I don't even understand what an IPA is. An Indian Pell Ale, like they do not taste good at all to me. I so I at least for me, like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go sit around the pool or I'm gonna go to the beach, I, I want Bud Lights, right? I want to I want to be able to drink five or six beers, you know, and have a good time. If I go to a dinner and I and I'm not gonna have a cocktail, and I'm not gonna have wine. I could I can have like one craft beer, you know. If they're just not to me not a drinkable. Beer like that. You're not sitting down and crushing a six pack of an IP. At least me yeah. and and the people I hang out with. They 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 just don't. I I've never seen anybody do that. There are obviously people that do, right? I mean, they'll sit and drink a six pack of that. Those beers are strong, man. You know, they're most of them are higher alcohol content, but just they're very bitter to me. And have you ever had a sour? A sour what? What's that? beer? I've had a whiskey sour. <laughs> Those are good too. No, it's a it's a beer, and I think a lot of uh, people probably make fun of me for this, but they're good. You know, it'd be like a 
whatever, a fruit flavor, a raspberry or a strawberry or whatever. It's a bunch of, di- it's kind of, it's not a seltzer, but it's, it's kind of a tart drinkable beer like that. It's you not know? those long drinks. Those no, no, are no, gin, no. right? No, no, those no, long no. drinks yeah. are gin. Yeah. Those, those are, are pretty tasty. Those are good. And I'm not a gin Summertime. fan. But they're sweet. So, sweet. And and they're like when it's hot outside, you know, when you want something, when you're having an alcoholic drink that quenches your thirst and you're out of the pool, that long drink or playing golf. Same with, that's what I think Bud Light is. You know what I mean? Like that's a- What's that's, a seltzer? Is a seltzer's same. malt liquor I've, though, isn't it? It's malt. Is it? I, I believe know. so. They're in the same category, right? Though that's a pool drink. Like, it's 8%. Too, not very many people drink those seltzers. At dinner, you know, you're not going no, to the, you're so. not going to the steakhouse at the El Dorado and ordering a seltzer. Same as I haven't seen them around much in summer, really. Right, I think but it's that's a only, that's thing. really the only time I drink beer. I might have a couple Bud Lights during duck season, you know, when we get down with the scout or something, or a you know a lunch beer after a hunt. But those seltzers were like prevalent every day of the summer. Oh, Beach, yeah. boat, day. swimming pool, everywhere. They're legit, and the, you know, if you go to a sports bar. You know, you're having a beer, right? You're getting a Bud Light. You're getting something like that. That at least I am. You know, I don't want to. I don't want a 24 ounce seltzer, even though places are selling them. You know, they're kegging seltzers now. Are they really? Oh yeah. Bud Lights. I don't know about. Uh, I don't remember what she got. I've seen that they have kegs of seltzer though. On tap. Yep. Really. Mm-hmm. Beer. What's the best way to mix a beer? Is it is it a Manmosa? Is it a Clamato red beer? A V8 red beer? Is it a Bloody Mary mixing beer? Is it a margarita with a beer in it with a Corona long neck or something? <laughs> but there are ways to do it. Like when I'm in Canada and the hunt's over, and that's where I learned about Clamato, like it's amazing. Okay. Not the spicy one. I'm not, I don't dig on the spicy Clamato. But the, a Clamato red beer is probably my favorite. But I also... You know, a lot of guys, they, they, there are orange beers out there. I think, I don't know. Blue Moon. And Blue Moon's got, no, they don't like a orange flavor. You put an orange with it, right? Yeah, but it's kind of that same principle. Oh, you're talking like a, a but, real shock top, I think. Yeah, shock the, top. That's the one I'm thinking. But it, a Bud Light with a little tiny bit of orange juice, juice in it. We call that a Manmosa, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I could drink two or three of those. So that's, in the morning, you know, if you're in that situation, if you're on a vacation or you're, Whatever, and, and you know, you're going to start your day drinking early. There's nothing better than a Bud Light with a splash of orange juice. Or if you got a hangover Sunday morning and you want to try and shake it a little bit of it off, to the best. Again, I don't want to drink with 10 orange of them. juice. With orange so juice. So when do you drink a red beer? Because the red beer is salty. That's where the, you get the salt in a red yeah. beer. That's what keeps you coming back, right? My dad used to drink beer and V8 all the time. I love them. I could drink Click a lot Click can of drink six. I can drink one. They're like a Bloody Mary. Yeah, I can drink one or two. I can Maybe drink one a lot of half, red beer. Size. But I don't put a whole lot of it in there. You know what I mean? Tyson. I a, you know Tyson. He drinks them like they're going out of style. Yeah. I, I really like them. The pre-mixed ones I don't love. You know, um, but, you know, if I get a can of V8 and I can pour a little, you know, quarter ounce of of V8 and then a full 12 ounce beer, that's great for me. You just get a little tiny bit of, like you said, that salt and some of that spice and and most of it's beer. It's got a, I just, I love that flavor. Uh, I do like those, um, have you had a Michelada like at a, a Mexican restaurant or something like that where they, they the, do the salt. It's almost like a Mar- or a Bloody Mary beer mix, but it's Clamato and they typically do the salted rim um, and then lime and beer and clamato juice or whatever they're good dude. what are they called a michelada michelada what and then their bud light makes the they make they make a pre-mixed one that's the same thing that's the, it's called a michelada one of them is they also have the I think theirs is just clamato called a ch- one chilada whatever they're chilada. too salty for me yeah i don't like the pre mix because ones. here's why it's because the bud light ones in my opinion have too much of the clamato in there yeah. They they don't I don't like a ton of clamato. I like still having a it doesn't need to turn bright red for Right. Me. I'm the same way. I want it to be like a pinkish red, you know, just a splash. Yeah. Same with the orange beers. I don't Is hair of the dog a real thing? Absolutely. That's where the orange beer was born. There's dude. no way it's a real thing. Oh. How could you be it's only cure. Why? Because why? Because it gets you back to even because if you wake up hungover, I, I don't experience a lot of hangovers. I really I know, don't. And it pisses me off. I know it's weird that I just don't, but is it a real thing to where you can just start back Drinking again, like is that what they call it Sunday Fun Day? It's is because you get right back on the throttle. 
to me, that's the only thing that makes me feel better. Greasy food doesn't help me. Advils don't help me. Drinking water doesn't help me. I I have to, if I'm going to get out of a hangover, it's only with more alcohol. And that's probably not what the world wants to hear, but that's the reality, dude. Like I said, if you're in spring training and you're going to do three days of drinking and watching baseball, I got to have a beer in the morning to get, get myself right, or I'm just going to feel like garbage all day long. That's that's It is what it is. So do you get drunk again? It's very hard for me to get drunk the second time. You know what I mean? Like I'll, if I really turn it up one night and then I'm hung over and I got to start drinking again, it's hard to catch that buzz again, but at least I'll feel better. You know, probably I would blow over the legal limit. I'm probably intoxicated, but I don't get the same like head change and all that that you normally get with being drunk, but it makes me feel good enough to stay out. If you push it really hard, you know, then you could, I can get drunk, you know, a couple of days in a row, but it's hard for me when I'm old now. Was it easier when you were younger? Oh yeah. I never even got hangovers. I was like you. I, I don't never, get them now though, but I, I don't know. drink. I don't really go all out. I just don't like a couple times during the summer I did, you know, at a party or something, but man, I, I see like, the I like shot show go all out. Where at? The shot show in Las Never Vegas. Heard of her. Yeah. <laughs> you betcha. Uh, well, the shot show's different because it's Vegas and the lights a, and the rugs, it makes you do all that. No, and it's that that, you know, they don't have any clocks in the casino, so you really never know what time it is. Did you walk out and you're like, it's like nine in the morning. Didn't you go to college there? Yeah. What was that like? Not good. <laughs> I know. But I was way more disciplined back then. You were I was playing an athlete. Sports, yeah. I was an athlete back then. But I imagine the temptation was uh pretty real even back then. Vegas is just a whole different. It's just its own thing. Vegas is the only place you go pay twenty dollars for a, a Bud Light on the Strip, and you don't even care. Is our world ever going to get back to where it used to be when we were on the Strip, or we were at Shot Show, and you would literally have the most fun of your life? Nashville, the most fun. South Florida, Phoenix, spring training. Like I'm sitting here, literally looking at you, going, "This will be the first time I've missed spring training in years." I know, and it's because I don't want to deal with. Wearing a mask at a baseball stadium, dude. No, it, it's not. Th- this year is not good for this first year. When's the, how many times have you ever missed shot show? You missed that in January. I mean, first not, time in not, 10, 15 years. I hadn't missed shot show since 2007. Yeah. 13 years. This first spring training in what, five or seven years, I think, that I've missed. And, but I'm the same way. I don't want to deal with the mask. But I also, th- just the. Uh, the feel of everything right now is so off. You know what I mean? Like you get around people and they're scared to be around other people. And that's not the, that's not the feeling that you're going for. You know what I mean? You don't want to go to spring training, go to a bar afterwards and have everybody scared to be around you. No, not at all. You know, we, this is just a funny little story. We were looking at wine uh, Sunday and Jilly, my girlfriend's a, uh, she's got her sommelier you know, first class done. So she knows quite a bit about wine and a lady in the store was looking at a bottle of wine and Jilly goes, Oh, that, you know, that's a really good bottle. Just being nice, being polite on a Sunday. You would have swore we, we, you know, had three heads the way the lady looked at us. Just people do not want to socially interact right now. And nobody, we weren't, you know, even close to her. It just, people are so far off right now with their, you know, emotions and, vibes and stuff. It's I think just, they are right. Like hundred percent. Like you, you were, you've been off this year. I've been off this 100%. year. Not, I'm not saying this calendar year, but through COVID there, it, it, it's hard to adapt when something like that happens. hundred percent. Hopefully it doesn't get any more drastic for people that, that are, that have a tough time coping, but there's been suicides over this shit. There, people have gone into, Guns. I mean, kids are out of whack because they don't, they're losing their social s- skills, right? Not going to school enough or hanging out. But I see it too. You're just like, man, I wonder if I would have reacted different in a normal year. I hundred percent. I mean, you know, you've got a big, you've got a big circle, right? I mean, you travel the freaking world. Didn't get to see any of them. Didn't get to see anybody. And in a way, you know, the year that we need bars the most, they all shut down. Right. Right. At home consumption. But yeah. it is, dude. I started thinking, like, I miss my Canadian friends. Not seeing them in a year makes you go, holy shit, we have it good. Is there no NWTF this year? It would have been right around now. It would have been two weeks ago. Oh, it would have been two weeks ago. Cancel. It was, they canceled it three months out. Can you imagine no NWTF? That's the, f- they, it sucks. We yeah. would have had, that's the most fun you can have is in Nashville. What's that? Uh, Broadway? The Broadway is the famous. Street in Nashville. Broadway and the Gulch and Midtown. Oh, man. Franklin. 
There's so many cool parts of tennis of Nashville. See, could you go? Well, you are going to go to Nashville in March. It'd be tough. No, April. April oh, 2nd. oh, never mind. That's right. Yeah. April 2nd. I'm what would you there. give yourself odds of staying sober through March and uh, a weekend trip to Nashville? I wouldn't play. I wouldn't. If I knew I was going to Nashville in March, I wouldn't have. I would have agreed <laughs> to do this in April. It's, it would almost be impossible. Well, are you going to go to Nashville and not have a cold beer on Broadway? <laughs> I, I, or at least Bonfire? Don't go to Nashville if that's the case. You, you know can't. what I mean? You can't. No. I don't know. I think we broke it down a little bit of bars and liquor and how good it's going to feel to get back to it. We didn't touch on wine. What? Uh, I mean, I'm not a huge wine guy. I want to have another one of these on wine. I want to break down wine because I've been trying to learn about it. Maybe we can get Jillian here to teach us because I've been <clears throat> working with – Hunter Glenn and you know Harry Merlot, Lago de Merlot, but Jeffrey Shiflett, who runs the Hunter Glenn Winery in Napa. I've been getting educated a little bit on grapes and years and barrels and materials and aging and all everything that goes into it. And um, as much as I love the Italian heritage, as much as I love good meals, I'm not a guy that is going to get go be so obsessed with with wine i like a good bottle of wine i'm not saying that i could tell a really good bottle of wine from a sub you know like a mid-range bottle of wine but when i taste like the hg merlot the merlot i like it's unbelievable it's good but i just don't get into it that much i'm not a guy that 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 craves wine where i know like some people i know like our, our assistant here jen she loves chardonnay and I'm and Jim Ray can drink Chardonnay while he's cooking, and I it takes everything in my power to to wash down Chardonnay. I don't I, know if I've ever had a whole glass of Chardonnay. I've can't. tried it because I don't understand it. I can't. Jilly Jilly kind of Jilly kind of says Chardonnay's you know kind of like a beer to us to a wine drinker. You know what I mean? Like a it's it's hard to have a a big you know bold glass of red wine, you know at at lunch. You know yeah per sure. se. Per se. So so a lot of wine drinkers will drink Chardonnay like a beer. It's a lighter, crisper. I know nothing about wine. But when you go to like the North Beach restaurant in San Francisco and you eat a badass Italian dinner, I could drink a bottle of red wine. But then I don't touch it again for Me too. That's how I am. months and months and months. I enjoy it and it's it's it tastes good and it makes sense. I love the idea of it, but man, I have a hard time like like I did this podcast today for Safari Club, just called Foul Thoughts. I like break down like how you and my brothers can go and high five on a goose hunt and be all fired up. But then you love going elk hunting and then deer hunting, and then coyote hunting, and then antelope hunting. And me, my brain isn't wired like that to where I'd like literally see a big mule deer. And my I don't go, oh, my God. I see one mallard duck and I just lose it. And that's kind of how I am with – Jack Daniels, the culture of Jack Daniels and 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 the the idea of Jack Daniels and the taste of Jack Daniels makes me go, yes. And then wine makes me go, eh. And then beer makes me go, eh, once in a while. You know, it's just like the way I'm wired. I don't I don't have to have any of it, including Jack Daniels, but there's something about a duck hunt that gets me fired up as opposed to an elk hunt. And I don't know if everybody's wired like that. You're more of an all-around guy. Yeah. You like it all equally. I like I would do anything to go on a mallard duck hunt or a Canada goose hunt. It's hell bent to get me out of the house to go on a big game hunt because I just don't dig it that much. Yeah. And you, I mean, I think that you pour a lot of passion into what you do, right? I mean, that's that's kind of what I would say is your defining characteristic, that if you've found something, you're in 100%. Type a. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, my baseball card collection, are you making fun of it? No. But my I, marble collection? The, the 4,000 Soprano, <laughs> Soprano posters that are around the room here. No, but I mean, but that's cool. You know what I mean? I think that's cool. And hey, I, I yeah, I, I can dabble in all the stuff, but even I don't even dig on wine that much. You know what I mean? But that's why I want to, we're coming up on the next few episodes of Breaking It Down with Chad and Alex right here at This Life Ain't For Everybody podcast, we're going to touch on wine and vineyards and whites and reds and Cab- Cabernet Francs and Cabernet Sauvignons and Merlots and Syrahs and Rosé. See, look at this, man. I'm just busting them out like I'm a tableside waiter. And we're going to touch on wine. We're going to go into a podcast and touch on why people prefer things and 
different personalities and what is the best form of hunting. We're going to talk about movies, comedies. We're going to break down dramas. We're going to break down music and albums, the greatest of all time, stand-up comedians, cooks, restaurants, fast food. We're going to do it all here at Breaking It Down with Chad Building, Alex Crosby, This Life Ain't For Everybody podcast brought to you by our friends and family in Lynchburg, Tennessee, the American icon, Jack Daniels. Enjoy it responsibly. Never allow underage drinking. Thank you so much for the downloads, the subscriptions. Tell your friends about This Life Ain't For Everybody. Everybody, the Foul Life Podcast, where the payment ends. Brand new episodes of the Foul Life TV will be on the Outdoor Channel exclusively beginning July 2nd, 2021. And look for our new brand, The Provider, Dry Rubs, Cookbook, and a new TV show coming to My Outdoor TV, the Mo TV out, uh, app that you can get. Subscribe to it. It's very affordable. Thousands of hours of your favorite hunting and fishing and outdoor content. The provider will be there. Thank you all so much for listening to This Life Ain't For Everybody. Breaking it down with Chad and Alex. See you all next time. Tom, hit that button. We need to come up with a new theme song for Breaking It Down. Tom, please play. Adam Hood, She Don't Love Me No More. We're going to go out with that right now. Tom, Jake, Adam Hood, She Don't Love Me No More. We might come up with a song that has a little bit more with breaking it down, or we might just do different songs every episode. Uh, uh, you like doing different I, episodes? I, I, no, Adam Hood's uh, Play Something We Know. That kind of goes with breaking it down. You know? Ooh, I like that. If Tom, Jake, play Adam Hood, play something we know. For Alex Crosby, I'm Chad Belling. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.